Well, the truck stop is empty. Yesterday was pretty busy. I parked on the side like this. Wasn't able to pull forward and park like always, you know, had to pull. This guy was, the same guy was uh, him and his buddy. You know, these uh, timber guys were parked here. And I just pulled forward, went back uh, and uh, blocked my uh, booster, drained the air and somehow managed to back, seeing the mirror close to, uh, close to the cab. And I was looking at these guys, you know, like that. <laughs> of course, every trucker, you know, you're still, no matter how long you drive, you're still interested in trucks. So this guy has a Peter build with a set back axle, which is not very, you know, usual, right? Usually people buy Peter builds because they want a, like a super long uh, base. But you see this one, um, I don't know if it's probably a bit far, but you can see that his bumper is a bit curved right and so the wheel is set back as opposed to regular classic trucks where where uh, the front bumper is flat right so this one has a corner and actually i talked to a guy from uh, q line and they spec the peterbilt uh 367 i believe the same way but this guy see this is ontario this is we are in dryden ontario so you see those three axles in the back so i guarantee it this guy is a tri drive so a tri drive and that's when they allow such a long wheelbase well long for ontario's sake and what's cool about this is that each stack of those uh short timbers is secured by two and i don't know they're like you know like a metal cord you know not a not a strap not a chain and it has one hook on one end, so the hooks are on this side towards me. But on the other hand, he has a winch. And so that metal cord, uh, you know, kind of like a super uh, thick, you know, guitar string, right? If you know what I mean. Like a cable, basically. Yeah, it's like a steel cable. So they only use steel cables. And that's probably legal only in, uh, in this forest industry. <laughs> Uh, and so yeah he puts the steel cable inside the winch and then on the other side it's like a regular winch like you see on flatbed and step deck trucks and he tightens it and so he has uh, one two three four he has five stacks so each stack has two cables so that's pretty fast you know that's why they do it because of course you don't need to mess with binders or ratchets you know you just need one big bar you know like a, that bar to tighten that uh, winch in the in over there and that's it boom 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 probably takes I don't know 15 minutes and of course these cables they're much lighter than than chains right that's why they do it so it's easy for him to throw it over yeah cool and this guy has a four axle trailer so so he has four axles on the trail and he has four axle trucks so eight axles so that you can do some serious weight with eight axles and uh, his uh, front axle on the trailer is uh, steerable and it's a pusher and how do i know it's a pusher because i see it has uh, airbags in the front and like a big arm so that's when he drains air from those uh, no he, when he puts air no releases air then the axle goes up because of that arm. And why am I? I'm still sitting here at at 8:42 local time. Is because the whole trucking operation has been shut down because of this. <laughs> I marked the spot. Basically, yesterday, a guy was passing me one of those double uh, drive van trailers. He was passing me, and all of a sudden you know, on Trans Canada 1, and a small chip, like a small stone or rock just flew in here, and there's a tiny crack in here. Well, not a crack, but just a chip. And for now, it's tiny, right? But I don't want to drive unless I fix it. And I, I passed, uh, I passed, when I was coming here, I passed the sign that says, windshield chip repair from 55 bucks but that's from 55 bucks so that means that 
they'll charge you hundred dollars right and there's a walmart that's open i think yeah the walmart should be open but it's like almost two miles away you know i don't want and there's not enough parking space in there with for the truck and uh, and there's a but there's a canadian tire canadian tire our auto parts store right next door and i go there and um no actually i go to their website because they sell all this stuff and it says uh, all canadian tire stores are closed but you can buy online and you can do uh you can do curb curbside pickup and so i bought this overpriced uh, pack you know for windshield repair like with a syringe 16 bucks canadian it's like 12 dollars us I, should, I think it should be like 3.99 uh, anyway, and they said wait for your and here's your confirmation. I paid online and they said wait for the email That'll say your order is ready and we'll bring it out to the front and so I went to that Canadian Tire and, and There's cars in the parking lot and everything is closed, but there's a Like a big sign says call this number and we will bring your order to your to your uh, Oh yeah, wow, a guy went uh, four axle truck, tandem Jeep, three axle trailer, tandem booster. And he has some kind of a dismantled excavator. So Jesus. Everybody has a tri drive. Maybe that should be my next truck. And we have this guy over here. Kenworth. Stem deck. That's not heavy haul. Come on. And anyway, I went there and, and there's a sign that says, call this number. I call this number and actually that's the phone right inside the store. And I said, hey, uh, you know, I ordered this little windshield kit repair and, uh, but I don't have the email yet. And she says, well, no, you cannot, we cannot bring it out to you. You have to have uh, the email. And as I started recording, I just got this. Check this out. Do you see this? It says, your order is now ready at curbside pickup park and call us and we will bring it out to you from Dryden Ontario your order is ready <laughs> cool so I want to go grab that thing and fix this uh, little no because you know then you have to replace the entire windshield because you know, if, if a crack goes right that's you know they'll give you a ticket because the crack will be right in my view of sight you know line of sight so I got to fix it and from here, it's still uh, 1,850 kilometers to Cambridge, which is uh, six and five, basically roughly 1,200 miles. So today is Friday. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think I'll be home Monday and just regroup, drop the Jeep and order permits for, for US and probably deliver maybe Thursday, Friday. I don't know. We'll see. got it that's what it looks like right so 16 bucks plus tax 19 dollars and the thing inside has five it's like five grams of glue <laughs> so phase one is complete so we uh, attached all these little things in there uh, put the resin in or the glue and then pulled out the the syringe so 1018, so now we're waiting 10 minutes. 10 minutes, and then we'll do after that. Uh, and then we have to remove the syringe. Collect that in and then reinsert and gently push down and rotate the plunger to lock, lock it into the upper spring clip. Place the curing strip over the damaged area. Curing strip. We're talking about this one. Curing strip. So I don't know how many kilometers or miles I will do today, but I, I want to fix this. So a uh, funny thing happened yesterday as I was entering Manitoba from Saskatchewan, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm going from Calgary pretty much uh, towards Saskatchewan and then Manitoba and then Ontario, right? So now I'm already in Ontario. But yesterday I passed all through Saskatchewan and when you enter Manitoba, which is like, you know, like a different state, a different province, 
there's like signs everywhere and like you know those electronic uh, with the solar panel signs like they use in construction zone in construction zones and it says entering Manitoba safe isolate for 14 days I'm like what and then we're driving and all of a sudden there's a sign that says uh, construction ahead slow down and then speed limit all of a sudden is 60 kilometers an hour 40 miles an hour and there's a sign that says barricade and, and another sign shows a guy with a flag right but barricade means the road is closed and I look ahead sure enough there's like you know the first they, they cut off one lane uh, so basically now you lose one lane it's a freeway of course right so you have two lanes on your side and then that at the end of that lane boom there's a barricade and I see up ahead like the the freeway is empty but I see some flashing lights on the right and they're all sending us to the right and then immediately left and turns out there's a rest area that I never knew existed because it's 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 easy to to overlook you know because there's no direct access straight from the freeway you have to take like this little maneuver and so they're sending us all through this rest area and I look in the mirror there's cars behind me there's tr trucks behind me and they have a kind of like ambush set up there's like two police cars some kind of a pickup truck and there's a guy in a white hazmat suit kind of like what you see in the movies you know like full biohazard suit and he has a mask you know like a basically like a biker you know like a huge uh, mask everything is closed he wears yellow gloves you know like basically Ebola you know Ebola entered Manitoba I'm telling you it looks scary and there's a cop next to him jumps out of, he, of his pickup truck as he sees us coming uh, the cop doesn't wear is not wearing anything no gloves no mask nothing and just he's standing right next to this biohazard guy <laughs> and the biohazard guy looks at me and he's like and he points like go basically because we are essential industry truckers that they, they, they don't have to stop us and so I'm assuming and then I look in the mirror the other guy the trucker just follows me but they stop each car and ask him questions basically where you're going I'm, I'm guessing you know because all non-essential traffic is uh, supposed to be avoided all right but that was like a weird experience you know kind of like a reminder of this crazy COVID-19 reality like wh where else would you see a guy in a white biohazard suit walking around on the street you know and I got so scared when I came to this husky over here of course the restaurant is closed but you can still do uh, takeout nobody's wearing masks no gloves like the staff inside no gloves but they do have that protective plexiglass now like the plate but I I was wearing my masks you know now I'm using two because this way it's more secure and everybody's looking at me like I'm an idiot you know I'm using a piece of paper I, I'm, I go to the pumps because I know they have paper towels in there I grab a paper towel I use that to open the door uh, and I have my masks on and I'm like the only guy but then this morning I saw another guy that guy was even cooler than me because not only did he have the mask but he had his sunglasses on because you know they say this virus can get in, inside your eyes right so when he was inside he had his sunglasses on with like super tight um, uh, seal and he has gloves on and he's walking and I see like he's probably as, as scared as me because he's uh, he was leaving the truck stop and I see a guy is coming towards him with a trash bag some trucker was this guy just immediately skedaddled to the right you know to create distance and he's looking at that guy like what are you crazy but that guy looks at him like what are you crazy you know kind of like why are you wearing a mask but I'm telling you but Manitoba I was I, I was talking about this when I was sitting in, in Calgary I was saying that Manitoba is the place to be right now they have the least amount of cases in all Canada and of course all US and uh, if you heard that press conference yesterday right uh, the Trump was saying thank God for truckers 
Thank God for truckers. So that's one statement by the president that I can agree with. Uh, and so, yeah, we're working. We're doing our job. And I still have no idea what I'm doing after. Uh, except as soon as I deliver, I'm going to hail trailer to fix these two little cracks under warranty approved by uh, Fontaine. But I don't have a load yet. And oh, and I checked the, the difference in permits cost for the last 500 miles. So I'm from Buffalo, New York to Mountainside, New Jersey. That's where I'm going. It's about 450, 500 miles. So if I drop the Jeep, the cost of permits just for three states, uh, New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and I'll be 89 feet long, 89. So I keep the neck, I keep the booster, because it's just easier, you know, I, you know, because I'm so heavy, uh, three axles in the back is not enough, so I would need four. And just that's too much, you know, hassle to disconnect the spreader and reconnect. It's just I have to pay the guy like three, two, three hundred bucks, you know, to do it. So might as well keep it. And it's much easier to uh, navigate on narrow, narrow streets with the, with the booster, you know. And so I'm going to keep it. And so with the long neck and the boost, I'll be 89 feet long. And with that 89 feet long, you need one escort in New York, New York State. But that's it. After that, I don't think I need uh, escorts. But anyway, the, the cost of permits and escorts approximately uh, without the Jeep is about 850 bucks. And then I ran the same scenario. If I keep the Jeep and run like this, 105 feet long, now I need two escorts in New York, front and rear, and I pretty much need um, need escorts everywhere, I think. But anyway, so the the cost of permits jumps up to uh, by pretty much fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, so if I leave the Jeep, I'm saving fifteen hundred bucks U.S. And the downside of that is that if there's a load. If there's a load in the States that requires me to have a Jeep, like something heavy, I won't be able to do it, right? So I will have to uh, do something up to like 80, 90,000 pounds, you know, 95,000 pounds. But what do you know, 1,500 bucks in this in this day and age, with all this uncertainty, that's a lot of money, right? So, so unless I, I book a load from US, you know, let's say now I'm driving, I still have three days to go to Cambridge. Uh, so if somebody offers me a load from Baltimore where I need the Jeep, you know, and it pays pretty good, then yeah, okay, I'll pay this extra 1500 bucks for permits so that I can do that nice load. But if there's no loads, I'll drop the Jeep and then I just might, after a hail trailer does the magic, I just might uh, come back empty, you know. Got new flags this morning because the two ones on this side were we're all dirty. Okay, last axle, air in. Booster, air in. We are good. Yeah, I had to lock it because I was back in here. I don't know if I can make this turn 
that's probably going around. The windshield is a bit dirty, but I don't want to clean. I don't want to use my windshield washer, windshield wash because I want that thing to, uh, you know, make sure it's rock hard and solid. Okay, the roof flashing lights on. This road train is on the way. Actually, I think I can make this corner. What do you guys think? Because, yeah, there's no guy. Like, if there was a guy here, I would not make it. Oh, geez, I have like 20 feet in there. Because I was afraid my last axle would, uh, would uh, hit that concrete over there. The seagull is not too happy to see me go because I, I threw her a piece of apple and as soon as I did that there was like 50 of them around me all you know making that noise like very melodic you know it's so beautiful and uh, and now she's uh, sees me I was like probably the only guy who gave him some food I think it's already cured you know we're gonna just a little bit because yeah it's like very hard to see okay so this is Trans Canada 1 surprisingly but in this spot it just goes across across the town of Dryden and time now is 11.45 <laughs> Eleven forty-five Eastern time, but local time. Local time is uh, ten forty-five. And kilometers to 102 east that's the bypass around uh, Thunder Bay and you would not believe it I've been getting some emails about you know loads <laughs> and all the loads I'm, I'm being offered or at least they're asking me for quotes all the loads are from US actually where I'm going because I posted my truck there and they all go into Alberta. Like the same guy I'm doing this load for, uh, he calls me, he says, hey, I got a couple of small excavators from uh, Baltimore. I said, he says 30,000 pounds, uh, so 350 a mile. And I said, okay, I'll do that. Uh, Ontario, right? He says, uh, no, Calgary. <laughs> I said, no, thank you. Thank you, but no, thank you. But then another lady emails me. I worked with her like three, four times before, like very nice uh, uh, company, like a very nice broker, you know, always pay, pays good on time. And she says, uh, do you have a beam trailer? Like no question mark at the end, just everything is in small letters. I, I, I'm guessing she's typing from her phone. Do you have a beam trailer? And I can, I can tell you that I'm getting this question maybe once a month. Once a month, people are asking me if I have a beam trailer. And of course, as soon as you buy a beam, uh, beam deck, they'll start calling you and saying, hey, do you have a drop side rail deck? You know? Or do you have a drive-in with reefer and electric hookup in the back? Like, 
you know my my rules about heavy haul right you never have the right trailer so i don't get upset about that i said no i don't have a beam trailer yet i got 26 in the whale 60 ton on uh, 10 axles for us nine axles for western canada and she says can you give me a quote from eastern canada going to pennsylvania 117,000 pounds 117,000 I said okay provided of course the spring restrictions are off in Quebec uh, so I give a quote and I checked the cost of permits uh, loaded miles 650 cost of permits and escorts three thousand four hundred dollars right so you cannot do something like that for two dollars a mile or three dollars a mile or even five dollars a mile because five dollars a mile times 650 it's it's just three thousand so if you charge them five dollars a mile they'll just pay for your permits and escorts right just to give you guys an idea right so I don't like talking about rates uh, because it can be very misleading people assume oh shoot you know you're making so much money but then what that's what they don't realize is that permits and escorts especially on heavy loads are horrendous they're awful plus four or I'm guessing somewhere around 38 39 F so this is like a Canadian version of spring but at least there's no snow everything is uh, you see everything is old I'm talking about the snow like the snow you can see like shriveled and dirty I like I like to see that you know when it's old and ugly that's good okay Thunder Bay 358 kilometers and we got a Western stunt deal over here Jesus right in front of police there's a police station and this guy is in a rush to a cemetery which I think it's open yeah it's now it's 12 o'clock so all cemeteries are open good timing all right we got 90 kilometers an hour that's the speed limit on all this Trans-Canada two-lane freeway doing 110 they will give you 95 bucks fine but and you get two po three points but nobody's driving 90 over here average speed is a hundred kilometers an hour 62.15 miles per hour or there's no air draft through that hole so I think I did a good job so yeah so this machine is uh, probably the heaviest of all cat 336s I ever moved I never had a cat 336 that weighs over 82,000 pounds and this one weighs 86,700 and a lot of people are still confused about all these axles and stuff so like one guy says uh, in the comment oh, I saw you move these on uh, eight axles with no Jeep how come you have a Jeep now well it's probably you don't know your geography you don't know that Canada is a different country than the States and that Alberta is a different province than Ontario right so I mentioned this before I'm gonna mention this again 
as soon as you enter Ontario the rules are pretty much kind of like pro-American right we got much more weight you don't need a Jeep you don't need a stinger or booster like with eight axles four axle truck four axle trailer I can do a lot of damage but as soon as you cross the line the west west side line of Ontario into Manitoba right that's the next province Manitoba Saskatchewan Alberta British Columbia those four provinces um, I guess because of climate but they don't like pusher axles they don't allow more than three axles on the trailer so if you need four axles you know depending on the weight right so if you need four axles in the back you gotta have a, a spreader or a booster right like three plus one two plus two three plus two stuff like that so only three axles are allowed on the trailer together they just want you to have more spacing that's the thing and the same on the truck they like short trucks over there like in Alberta maximum wheelbase is 267 inches if you're longer than that you cannot get a permit for oversized load uh, and that's why people either have like 244 wheelbase with the regular three axle truck no pusher or they have uh, I think you can go over 267 if you are tri drive you know if you're tri drive they tell you what you have to be I think it's like somewhere between 265 and 269 but I'm not too sure but just like that uh, forestry guy he had a um, he had a tri drive right so something like that that might be cool for for a heavy hauler like me but I go to US all the time you know you don't need a tri drive in the States but it's it's pretty useful in Canada so yeah and that's why I need a Jeep because so they don't recognize my pusher and I need more axles than three on the truck steer and tandem right so and I don't have a single axle Jeep like for this machine pretty much all you need is a uh, is a single axle Jeep and maybe a booster in the back yeah like eight axles that's all you need but because I don't have a single axle Jeep uh, I run a tandem and over here the good thing is that it does not matter right I'm 105 feet long or 32 meters and no escorts are required but as soon as they go into US that's where they start punishing you right that's why I want to drop the Jeep and that's why I told you guys earlier uh, that I can save $1,500 US on the last leg of the trip from uh, Buffalo New York to uh, Mountainside New Jersey if I leave the Jeep at home they just don't like it when you're so long right like uh, New York you need one escort if you're over 80 feet long if you're over 90 feet long you need two escorts on the freeway and those escorts don't come cheap don't get me started oh so yeah and then this lady the good broker the girl she has uh yeah that heavy one from quebec and then she says um no then another guy mm -hmm. another guy from the same company emails me he says uh, we have a john 10 drill rig and as soon as i saw that name john 10 i'm like oh my god not again please and uh he says the weight is ninety-seven thousand pounds yeah right and I I emailed him and I said I just moved a, a John 10 BM 23 from Las Vegas to Alberta and I think and I said it was hundred and seven thousand pounds so can you please verify what's the model number of this machine and is it really a drill rig or is it a pile driver and the guy didn't respond yet but yeah that one is from New York State going to uh, to Alberta well at least the weather
weather's good. You see, blue sky. Last time I went here, right? It was uh, snow, ugly weather, super cold. Now my fuel mileage is much better this time, and this machine is even heavier than uh, than that um, scraper truck, right? Control is set at 91 kilometers an hour, 56 miles per hour. We are flying. See, I have two hands on the wheel. It's a very responsible and dangerous job. 105 feet long, 11 feet 4 inches wide, 13 feet 10 inches tall. is about what is it 86 and 72 what is that uh, 150 157 158 we got some kind of a some kind of an urban area over here 60 kilometers an hour the speed limit is Yeah, one thing I notice is that now there's less traffic than normal. You don't see as many cars, mostly trucks. So, I was a good boy yesterday, did my Kentucky fuel return. Uh, paid to Kentucky ten dollars and ninety five cents for the three hundred fifty miles I did there in in the first quarter of this year so that's what I have to do each quarter right so Kentucky even if I didn't have any any uh, miles in there I still have to do like a zero return but this time I had miles I ran through Kentucky so and Kentucky like I always say is the easiest state to deal with in terms of taxes they take credit cards on the website it takes five minutes super easy just you put in all you have to do is put in your Kentucky number you know your registration number they call it license Kentucky license and then how many miles did you run Put the miles in right away they multiply by the factor which pretty much is the same every year and so 350 miles you owe us ten dollars plus tax okay now the next one is new york i gotta do a new york return new york keeps sending me emails why don't you do our return online and once I fell, I fell a victim to that scam, you know, I registered, I got the password, I got the number, and then I go online, I do my return, and then of course at the end it says, how would you like to pay? And I look for the credit card option, it's not there. So I go in the help, it says, uh, acceptable methods of payment, uh, direct bank transfer, in brackets, US only, or, uh, 
yeah, that was the only way. Like, or basically, it only works if you are American. If you're Canadian, you cannot pay them. You still have to send them a check. So why do I need to do it online? Since I'm already sending you a check, so I'm I'm just doing it. Uh, you know, I have a paper form on the computer. I just fill it out. Just copy everything from my last one, just change the miles, whatever I ran there, right? And then attach a check and send it to New York State. And so now, today, I'm good. That's the uh, today is the turn for New York. I'm gonna do uh, the New York return, print it out, and then when I'm home, I just need to stop by my uh, post office and uh, get a US stamp. And mail the letter. Ma mail the letter. And then tomorrow, I'll be doing my uh, IFTA. IFTA return. That one will take probably half an hour. And again, I cannot do it online. I have to send them a check uh, when I'm back home. So that's what's going on. Yeah, I wanted to stop by uh, JC Trailer and pick up my uh, my flip box, but I remember how small the, the the factory is. I cannot go there with the Jeep and the Stinger. I'll have to do it some other time, probably after I come back from the States. I have to go there, I have to give him a check anyway, like my last check, the last payment for the spreader. And they gave me a discount because they made a boo-boo, like no shims, right? Could not be used as a 2 plus 2, which is exactly what I asked him to do. I asked him to give me a 2 plus 2 plus, plus 3 plus 1 capability, and without shims, it can only be used as 3 plus 1 not good so I had the shims made in Alberta right uh, never used them yet so we gotta see what's happening with them maybe with the next load another news uh, I finally got an email from the medical company where I bought uh, masks and um, gloves they shipped it to a wrong guy in Ottawa right and the guy calls me he sees my name like the his name his address on the package but when he once he opened it he saw my name my phone number and so I sent him an email I said guys you made a mistake you sent my package to your own town to your own guy and they said okay sorry about that we're gonna send the UPS to pick it up and we're gonna send it to you and I keep checking every day on their website the status of my order still says uh, processing processing and then finally yesterday I got two emails saying that uh, your order is, is being shipped uh, this you'll say you'll have another email giving you the tracking number and then I received the second email and actually did not have the tracking number I have to go back to their website and in comments over there they put the tracking number and I, I put that one in and it says uh, ETA Friday which is today so today I should receive two boxes of masks like 50 masks per box like you know the same blue blue mask that I was wearing like a basic one and another box of gloves and I wanted to uh, donate them to a local hospital but I still did not receive those uh, three masks I bought from UK I like those ones uh, much better because they're supposed to be a really antivirus whereas these ones are basically it's more to protect other people from yourself if you're coughing you know but those masks, they really have this fabric uh, that stops the virus. And I got three of them. 
Um, so if I, but usually, usually my post office sends me an email. All right, we got a package. Uh, please pick it up at your earliest convenience. That's how they all always phrase it. Pick, pick it up at your earliest convenience. To me, that sounds like as, as soon as possible. But some people say I'm wrong. But anyway, so, so far I did not receive that earliest convenience uh, email. So those white masks from UK are still somewhere because they're coming from UK, right? It's a long way. And especially when it's an international order, like customs takes time. So I don't know. So basically when, when, when I'm home, the plan is to stock up on masks and uh, gloves and wear them every time I go inside a truck stop or gas station or a store, uh, both in Canada and US. I did that over here in uh, Dryden. Everybody was uh, staring at me. They thought probably I'm infected. Nobody's wearing anything. No gloves, no masks. People are... The guy buys food, like the restaurant is closed. The guy comes over, okay, we stay farther, far apart. Of course, he, can, he, he sees my mask. He, he, think, he thinks, okay, I better stay away. Maybe this guy is infected, right? So he stays very far away, orders his wedgies and some kind of a burger and he says where do I buy coffee and then he grabs his food and they said coffee is at the register now he pays at the register and then I'm looking at as he's going out and I wince when he's just touching he's taking the handle on the door with his bare hand opening opens it and just whistling leaves the truck stop like unbelievable and then I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not gonna even wash those hands he's gonna eat those uh, tasty wedges potato wedges I'm telling you like it's like the virus does not exist as far as these people are concerned I don't know and actually Ontario uh, Manitoba is the best in terms of uh, your chance of being infected because they have like I forgot 200 cases for the entire province but Ontario has like 20 times more you know and I understand it's a remote area this Dryden it only has 8,000 people uh, but still like I don't understand how how can people be so careless you know and then as I place my order for the uh, takeout I said okay four eggs and dry toast nothing else and it's only takeout right you cannot sit the sitting area is closed and the lady says how are you paying I said with a debit card she says oh you have to come over here so I have to walk around and she's standing like three feet away and uh, she's doing her thing on the computer so that I can pay with the machine you know and she's not wearing the mask she's not she does not have any gloves but at least you know I had my mask and then as soon as I came back I sanitized my uh, my hands and the gel thing the gel thing is gone so now you see it's liquid it's, I'm using that I use this as a dispenser for that liquid um, sanitizer I got from a guy who brought me a big jug of sanitizer thank you very much because yeah that gel just doesn't last very long but this one I only refilled it once and then you know you just open like this and you sprinkle on your on your feet uh, sorry on your hands and you're clean now I know it's hard for uh, people from India and Pakistan right because they have to wash their feet then it can be it become a problem right so you have to carry two times more sanitizer than me right but I don't have to to, to wash my feet uh, I was at the hotel yesterday took a shower everything is good oh and 
and um, remember how I'm, I'm always uh, I was I'm having this little issue with the laundry cannot find a laundromat and uh, my source in Florida who remains who wants to remain anonymous in case of a prosecution by the government says all laundromats in Florida are closed and so I'm sitting in my truck yesterday, I, I, I go on Google Maps, I find the phone number for the truck stop, which is like 30 feet away, I call them on the phone, you know, stay away from the viruses, I say, hey, you guys have a laundromat by any chance? And they said, yeah. I said, cool, is it open? And the guy says, yeah. And I said, well, I'm asking because I see like all your uh, beverage machines are closed. Uh, you know, you don't sell any any dispensable uh, beverages anymore, right? And at the hotel where I was staying last night, the laundry was closed because of this pandemic. But the guy says, no, ours is open. And it does not take credit cards, it takes cash. But I did, I did not go. Because it was already eight o'clock at night I figured if I go it'll take me like two hours you know to wash and dry I wanted you know I was driving all day so I wanted to relax in my truck so but at least that's good news so that some truck stops let's just say as a theory some truck stops still have laundry service available Because, yeah I'm running out of clothes I still have like the most popular item is uh, t-shirts I know I have probably like 50 t-shirts I, I open my drawer I still have like 20 30 t-shirts and I got a bunch of shorts so there is hope yet uh, either I find a laundromat and I can wash my stuff uh, lots of that is pants like jeans or I have another pair of this super nice uh, super comfy pants from Walmart 15 bucks Canadian and and then if it gets really warm which I don't think it will it's like plus two now 34 but if it does get warm I can switch to wearing shorts you know because of the uh, pandemic induced pants shortage like don't blame me if you see a guy with skinny legs walking around in shorts it's not because he wants to show off his physique it's because of the pandemic right we all suffer so all right anybody's behind me one guy that's it See, like every 5-10 kilometers they give you this like a passing area and a lot of these people they don't know how to drive and they always as soon as you pass you as soon as they pass you they go right which to me it's I'm always smiling because the way these uh, passing lanes work this lane ends yeah, just I saw some waves in the pavement but this lane ends and so you always have to go back and these people like especially cars as soon as they pass you they they go right you know like if you pass me at like 190 kilometers an hour stay in the left lane because the right lane ends what you cannot learn this I see at the top of the hill on the right there's a yellow sign it says uh, right lane ends in 300 meters thousand feet so if there's nobody behind you know you can you might as well stay in this lane
somebody asked me uh, how the truck drives with uh, being so long and honestly I can tell you it drives like a train I feel like the train you know a railroad engineer I'm in the front I have no idea what's going on in the back there 105 feet away uh, I see some sometimes I look in the mirror I see people jumping on and off you know throwing some bags probably some Mexicans I don't know like I don't bother them they don't bother me once I saw a guy trying to push off a cow but I was driving like like this speed you know maybe what uh, 50 miles an hour and the cow got spooked for some reason I had to stop you know that was like the only time I had to deal with the uh, with those guys over there but yeah most of the time you know I'm driving I know my destination I don't care what's going on over there half a mile back so we are a train Construction. So what are you guys building over here? Don't tell me you're building two more lanes Because I know that's what that will never happen of the bridge fell into the river and there were two guys there trying to lift it with some ropes happens ever all the time <laughs> 